Hello, another video showing the operation of one of our substations that we built for our miniature power grid system for BTC's instrumentation lab. Currently, we have the substation set up in such a way, this is our Nooksack substation on the north end of our lab. We have five breakers on our single bus arrangement, and these five breakers are tying two transmission lines and, and three lines from each generator onto a common bus. Currently, we have all five breakers in the closed position. Coming over here, you can see up there, looking at the circuit breakers, they all have red lights. In the power industry, red means on, means dangerous, means closed. Green means tripped, means open, means safe. But right now, they're all in the closed condition. This is how we'd expect to see the substation of everything we're running. Now, currently, we don't have any of our generating stations running. They're all down. So I can trip and close breakers with impunity. I don't worry about anything like that. There's, there's no actual power up there at all. What I would like to demonstrate here is how to do a manual trip on the Schweitzer uh, relay. We are using this relay for an 87 bus differential protection. It happens to be a model 551 overcurrent relay that we have exploited for the purpose of 87 bus differential. Eventually, we'd like to get our own 87 bus differential relay, ideally a, a model 387A or 487A for our substation. But for right now, this does suffice. We were able to figure out how to hook up the current transformers to give single bus differential protection, and we simply use this model 551 as a current sensor. We've got it set up for an instantaneous trip on the lowest pickup value possible. So if it sees any uh, difference of current on the bus going in versus going out above its threshold, it trips immediately. What I'd like to demonstrate here is one of the features that you have with a digital relay, and that is you can force the trip output contact to actually close. And I'm going to do that to show how the lockout relay function on the substation works and how when that trips, it trips off all five circuit breakers. So, going in here, I push the control button, output contact testing. I say, yes, I want to do that. And then here at this point, I can select uh, different output contacts. I have output one, output two, output three, output four, alarm, rolls back to output one. Output one is the contact that runs to our 86 relay to trip it, so that is the one I'm going to pulse. I'll select that. It says, do you really want to do this? which is a good thing because you really want to think twice before doing this in a working system. By pulsing this output contact, I'm going to essentially force a trip condition. So I'll push select after I move the toggle over to the yes mark. I'm going to press select and there we go. It pulsed the output. What that did is that tripped my lockout relay. The spring-loaded handle kicked over now to the trip position. And what that did is that tripped all my breakers. If I go over here, you can see now all my circuit breakers, all five of them are showing green. They used to be all red, they're now all green. So that is how our single bus protection scheme works. If there's any differential current detected on that bus, that indicates a fault within the bus. And the only way to guarantee we clear all power to that faulted bus is to trip all five circuit breakers, which is what our lockout relay is doing. So again, that's a demonstration of how we can pulse the output on a Schweitzer uh, protective relay and just to show how this works. You would not want to do this in a working system unless you really knew what you were doing, because you are forcing a trip event to occur. In this case, as I said, none of our generators are online. Everything's off. There's no power on the bus whatsoever. So we can trip and close breakers with impunity, and we can do a demonstration like this. But it's a uh, good thing to know about, especially if you are troubleshooting what you think is a faulted protective relay system. You may need to do a test like that to see you know, what happens when the output contact closes. But keep in mind, if it's working like it should, it will trip whatever it's designed to trip when you go ahead and do